The whole diet is what many of us think of as regular or general. It's food as is commonly served to anyone. This should not be taken too literally though. For instance... What's up, dog? Peter's eating a whole carrot, but most of us serve carrots cut up or sliced and cooked. So it does not literally mean whole, but rather as typically served. So Linda, it's okay to cut the sandwich in half or serve applesauce if that's what's on the menu? Yes, the bottom line is that with the whole diet is that you do not need to modify the consistency. However, the person might have other modifications such as low sodium or low fat. So that's why reading the diet orders is essential. They can be found on the diet sheet or on the diet card in your kitchen. But what if somebody is unable to cut their food? Oh, great question. If they're physically unable to cut their meat or other items on their plate, they may require staff assistance to cut. This should be clearly specified on the diet order so people know what they're supposed to do. So bon appetit and stay tuned for the modified consistency diet. In order to cut the size pieces you need, start with a clean, sharp knife. Use the cutting board sample sizes to help you determine the size you need. Each food item must be cut uniformly and fit into the one inch box. There may be individualized changes on someone's diet order sheet or diet card. Check the diet order to ensure it is correct before preparing and serving. On the one inch diet, you may need to modify the meats the hard fruits and vegetables further. One example would be to cut the meats into half inch pieces. Remember to follow the person's diet order and instructions from the qualified professional at your agency. If an individual needs food cut into half inch pieces, you need to make sure each and every piece is that size. Larger pieces could be very, very dangerous and it's important to fork through the pieces and make sure they are half an inch. Use the box on the cutting board to check your size pieces. If you do find a piece that's too big, remove it and cut further. There are some food items that you do not serve on the half inch diet. They are hard crackers, nuts, popcorn, potato chips and other chips, hard cookies, hard granola bars, pretzels, and hard or chewy candy. When in doubt, Linda, leave it out. Always look at the individual's diet order and meal plan for any specific modifications the person may require.
The quarter inch diet requires expert chopping skills since the pieces need to be so finely cut. A sharp knife is essential. You may want to use a special knife or a chopper to achieve the correct consistency, especially when you have many diets to prepare. Remember to always fork through the food and pull out any pieces that are too big. Also, you want to make sure to moisten the food on this diet, particularly the meats. Food can sometimes be dry and hard to eat. Moistening them helps to make it easier to handle. Please make sure to add a moistening agent that is palatable and goes with the food that you're serving. Yeah, because rule of thumb, if it's something you wouldn't want to eat, don't serve it. Try adding broth, gravy, soup, barbecue sauce, or some other sauce that goes with the meat. How about milk? Oh, no way, Linda. Would you like to eat milky chicken? Milky chicken? Nah, not really. So think it through and choose what people like on their entrees. Okay, here are some food items that we do not serve on the quarter-inch diet. They're hard crackers, nuts, popcorn, potato chips and other chips, hard cookies, hard granola bars, pretzels, and hard or chewy candy. Always look at the individual's diet order and meal plan for any specific modification the person may require. Remember, the bottom line is always safety. The ground diet is just that, ground. Make sure each piece is the size of a grain of rice. We use a food processor to achieve the right consistency. Make sure you start with a clean and functioning food processor. Good equipment is essential to preparing food properly. Also, use the proper size processor depending on the amount of food you need. So if you're only making one modified consistency, you can use a smaller machine. And if you're cooking for more individuals, you're going to want to use the larger model. Once you have the proper equipment, you can start the process. When working with whole foods, you may want to cut them into uniform pieces. You're looking to grind the food into rice-sized pieces. And when you place the food in the processor, you're going to pulse the blade. Continue to use a spatula to ensure that all the food particles are being ground uniformly and make sure they're rice-sized pieces. So even though you've ground the food, you can't serve it yet. It's too dry. You need to add moisture to form a cohesive mass. Yeah, when it is dry, it looks like sawdust. Hey, why don't you just at the moisture while you're processing. That way you can save some time. Yeah, that you can't do that because it could come out too moist, more like lumpy puree. Uh. So it's best to grind the food and then to fold in the moistening agent afterwards to achieve the right consistency. I love barbecue sauce on my chicken. You know what? I like some mayonnaise mixed in and make some chicken salad. Sounds good. You can add broth, gravy, bouillon, mushroom soup, or even the cooking water you use to cook the vegetables. The key is to use moisteners that taste good and are still on the person's diet. Ask your dietitian if you're not sure. Well, how about milk, Linda? Milk can be used. It can be great for cereals, cakes, potatoes, and bread. But for meat, no way. Only use moisteners that taste good. good. Yeah. Another thing you can do is to make sure that the food is moist enough is to tap it with a fork. If you hear this sound, it tells you the food is moist and will be easier to eat. What about the hard to process foods? If food cannot be processed into rice sized pieces, please do not serve them. Remember, only rice sized pieces. Rice size pieces, rice size pieces, rice size pieces. Oh, and don't forget, there are certain foods you cannot serve on a ground diet. They are hard crackers, nuts, popcorn, chips, hard cookie, crunchy granola, pretzels, and hard and chewy candy. So when in doubt, leave it out. Pureed foods are smooth and creamy like pudding with no lumps. Pureed food is not liquefied. And it is very important that uh, you puree foods with the right amount of liquid to achieve the best consistency. So let's get started with the food processor and go through the steps to make the perfect puree. Gentlemen, start your engines. 
Once again, you want to start with uniform pieces. They will process more evenly and smoothly. Always measure the portions of food before processing. Now you add the desired liquid. But remember not to add too much. Once it's in there, you can't take it out. Start slowly and add a little at a time. Blend it and if needed, keep adding un more until it is smooth and creamy, just like pudding. Mm, but remember, some foods are fluid filled to begin with, like fruits and vegetables. So what you're going to want to do is when you start with canned fruits and vegetables, you should drain and rinse them. Not only will this remove the salt and sugar, but it'll help keep the end product from being too liquefied. This is one diet that you can use other equipment to form a smooth puree. Try the immersion blender or the magic bullet for great results. Watch out for lumps. And what do you do with those? When in doubt, throw it out. <laughs> Parade food needs to be smooth and creamy. Haven't I told you that? Yeah. But what about all those foods that are hard to puree? Well, there are some foods that are hard to puree. Unless you have a very heavy-duty blender, you may want to avoid cereal with dried fruits, carrot raisin salad, raspberries, cold slaw, coconut, uh, grilled or fried foods, foods with skin or cooked cheese. Wow, to promote a better puree, prepare food using moist cooking methods like stewing, poaching, steaming, and boiling. Substitute cream corn for whole kernel corn and use cooked vegetables. And if you have any question about any foods or food products, please consult with your dietitian or qualified professional at your agency. Your agency may provide a list of foods that can be dangerous or hard to process. Remember the golden rule, Peter. When in doubt, leave it out. But I have already told you that, Linda. You know what? It's <laughs> never too many times. Some people at your agency require liquid consistency modifications. It's critical that you follow these orders. Typically, there are three main liquid consistencies. We'll go over each one and show you how to make it. The trick is proper measuring. If you follow the directions exactly, it will come out just right. Kind of like baking. Size matters. Here are the main tools that you'll need for a thickened liquid. Measuring cups, measuring spoons, a knife, a spoon, and the thickening agent. We're going to demonstrate to you now how to make thickening liquids using this product. Please follow the directions carefully of any product that you may choose. First, read the directions before starting and gather what you'll need. This product starts with four fluid ounces. That means you should be using a liquid measuring cup to pour the right amount of liquid. Make sure to see the liquid at eye level to ensure the exact amount. Then, read the directions to determine how much thickener should be added to your liquid. A big T or T-B-S-P stands for tablespoon. A small T, or TSP, stands for teaspoon. A very common mistake is to use the wrong spoon. So when measuring, level off the product with the back of a knife. Then what you're going to want to do is slowly add the product into the liquid while stirring briskly. Stir for about 15 seconds and then let stand for one to five minutes. It will then reach the desired consistency. These directions work for all liquid consistencies. The difference is how much thickener you add to the liquid. Nectar should be the consistency of room temperature maple syrup and fall off the spoon like this. Honey should be the consistency of room temperature honey. And pudding should be like pudding. You can stand a spoon in it and it must be spooned into someone's mouth. So refer to any special guidelines and always check the diet orders for each individual before preparing the modified foods and liquids to ensure accuracy. A safe and happy dining environment is the goal. Bon appétit! <laughs>